Hello everyone, this is Jay, consultant at Rebelwood. Welcome to the first video in our IBM Planning Analytics series. The topic of this video is attribute-based hierarchies in Planning Analytics Workspace. So in this video, in the uh, first couple slides, I'm going to explain what an attribute-based hierarchy is. Then we're going to get into uh, a demo, and I'm going to show you how to create an attribute-based hierarchy, and also how to use the attribute-based hierarchy in a workspace to analyze and input data. To better explain what an attribute-based hierarchy is, I need to briefly talk about what a regular hierarchy is. A regular hierarchy, also sometimes uh, known as a named hierarchy, defines some logical grouping of dimension elements, and it allows the end user to perform analysis on data by those groupings. In a single dimension, there is almost always a primary hierarchy unless the dimension is completely flat, but there also may be several other hierarchies. In this example, the product dimension's primary hierarchy groups products into product groups and product groups into product types, then all product types are grouped into a product total. A user may create another hierarchy that defines a different logical grouping that groups products into product classes or product tiers, for example. Attribute-based hierarchies open up a very different way of thinking about hierarchies in TM1. An attribute-based hierarchy still behaves the same way as a traditional hierarchy, but it can be created sort of on the fly out of member attribute values. So for example, if you have a product dimension with a product group, product type, and product structure, you can analyze data by that hierarchy structure. But let's say you have an attribute on that dimension called product class where you have tiers one through five, and tier one products are premium products, and tier five products are more basic. Before the hierarchies feature introduced by Planning Analytics Workspace, you could have added an alternate hierarchy in the product dimension in order to analyze data by that product class instead of product type. But that solution would not allow you to analyze, both, uh, analyze data by both hierarchies at the same time on different axes. In order to do that, you would have had to create a separate product class dimension and add it to an analysis cube or virtual cube in addition to having the regular product dimension in that cube. Now, there's no need to create a separate dimension. You can just create what looks and behaves like a new dimension to an end user by taking advantage of the attributes. Here I have a simple workspace book for product analysis. On the bottom section, I have uh, an analysis of the product dimension on the rows and the organization dimension on the columns. As a workspace administrator, I have the special ability to edit the dimension. Let's take a look at the attributes of the product dimension. As you can see, there's a primary product hierarchy and a leaves hierarchy by default. Let's right click and edit the dimension. You can see that the product dimension has a product class attribute. Again, in this case, Tier 1 products are more premium products, and Tier 5 products are more basic products. So what if I want to analyze my data by product class instead of the regular product hierarchy? Now there's no need to create a new dimension and an analysis cube. I can simply right-click on the product class attribute in the dimension editor and select Create Hierarchy. And when we do that, take a look. You can see that the new product class hierarchy is now available for use. Let's close this dimension editor. Let's add the new product class hierarchy to our analysis. Right click on the dimension on the rows and say replace this hierarchy and select the product class hierarchy. Let's take a look at the new hierarchy itself in a little bit more detail. You can see that all the products where the product class attribute was filled are now children of its attribute. Let's sort the hierarchy as well while we're here. Not only can I view the new hierarchy in place of the primary hierarchy, which is what uh, we just did, I can also view both hierarchies on separate axes. If I right click and say add related hierarchy and select the original hierarchy, as you can see, it's also added to my analysis. Moving the regular hierarchy to the columns, you can see now both are on separate axes. As I expand each hierarchy, you can see the data still resides at the leaf level.
To illustrate the fact that attribute-based hierarchies still behave the same way as regular hierarchies, let's switch to an element that I know I, where I can enter data. And if I enter data at a consolidated level, TM1 spread functionality still behaves the same way as it did at any other time. A little bit more about this topic before we conclude. Attribute-based hierarchies can only have two levels. They can be consumed through workspace views, PAX exploration views, PAX quick reports, and web sheets created by quick reports. They can be created by workspace admin in planning analytics workspace. They can be manipulated in planning analytics workspace or by turbo integrator scripts, and they do not affect the dimension structure. That concludes this video in Revelwood's IBM Planning Analytics series. I hope you learned something of value, and thanks for watching.